Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Unscripted Coding. Today, we are looking at a very tiny subset of a landing page. Now, if you've basically been on the internet, you've probably been sold or, or uh, advertised certain goods, and landing pages are pretty huge. Um, something like this example right here um, is what you would typically see. Uh, for a product that maybe hasn't launched, they have like a little box that says, click here to learn more. Um, the particular version I'm thinking of is something like this, where there's a product that's not quite out yet, and you're, you want to sign up for notification. You want them to give you an email when the product comes out, and so you want to add your email to their mailing list. Now, obviously, there's a ton of different ways we can we can build this. There's some that have very little text, some that are quite busy looking, and others that have countdowns that have um, that have other elements to it. So we're not well. I don't really care about how it looks. Um, what I want to know is how do I do a mailing list properly? Now, here's where. It's interesting. Um, you would think that there's a very easy way to do this. It would just be, you know, sign up here and then it comes to Anson's list. It comes to my list that I keep on Excel or something. And there's all sorts of mechanisms to do that. But the problem is that whether you're in the US or in the European Union or wherever, um, there are very strict requirements in your emails to allow people to unsubscribe to your email. And I think you want to have very good management of your list. It doesn't just dump into a text file. It doesn't dump into um, my Excel worksheet or whatever. You want to have a system that is good at managing these lists. Now, if you're looking for something super simple, I think, you know, MailChimp will, will set up a landing page for you. Um, so would WordPress, uh, with very little technical know-how. They, they will just set you up, um, give you a visual editor, and they have really good management tools for that. But as soon as you start scaling up to more than a thousand, more than 10,000, more than a hundred thousand names, um, MailChimp starts to get a bit expensive and, um, you know, you want to be able to manage it a bit better. We are, you know, talking about programming after all. So how do you do this yourself? Well, you could start from scratch. So yes, you could still use an Excel sheet. You may want to take down the time they subscribe. You may want to have tools to allow you to remove your name from the list. But for me, I think SendGrid is SendGrid by Twilio is probably your best shot. Um, I use SendGrid quite a bit to send very cheap emails out. They scale very well to 10,000, 100,000, millions of emails. And they also do texts, WhatsApp, WeChat. They, they touch on a whole lot of different areas. But SendGrid, I'm sure has um, a a marketing marketing list that that you can manage properly, and they will let you programmatically interact with it via an API. So that is what we're going to do. How do I do a super simple marketing list? Tie it to SendGrid so we can scale up. Make sure we follow the rules and the regulations in various places. And, and just build it into a page. I'm going to start with just my blank template. You can see there's a header, a footer. Um, and what I'm going to do in the next couple minutes is do a very super simple landing page with Bootstrap. It's going to be pretty, pretty horrifically ugly, I suppose. Um, it's not going to look like, actually, some of these are not the nicest designs, but, um, you know, really what I want to do is put in an input box and a button um, and, and wrap it up so we have something to work with.
Okay, so always fun. I lost about 35 minutes of footage, but it's actually not too bad. Um, the main, well, the main thing that was happening a lot off screen was I created my SendGrid account. I created an API here. They have kind of a walkthrough. But what was really annoying was you needed to go to settings, go into your API key and grant the right permissions to access uh, the marketing tools. The other thing we've done um, was obviously finish up the, the landing page. But what we learned was we can't just append the, the code that they provide so they provide code here. We can't just append it to the bottom of the page here. What happens is you hit a course policy. So what we have to do is hide all of this functionality behind in a server. And what I did was set up a fast API server. And there's another video. So I'm using an existing server and run it through there. Um, my fast API server is in Python. So you can take a quick look at the code right here. It's, it's just a chunk of it, very simple. Um, we do a validation. So we need any kind of character, at sign, any kind of character, dot, and uh, any other character. So, um, you know, the, the standard, the standard, um, what do you call it, uh, email format. What happens is then, once we've matched it and it's okay, we will change the status, that's for my own purposes. We reach out to SendGrid's API, we have a list ID, oh, uh, I forgot to mention. Well, let's come back to that. Uh, we provide a list ID, that's the one, that's a list we want to add it to. So over here, we have created a list, you can create it right on the page create a list, there's an ID, and then we put in the contact, whatever email we enter, we have the API key, you send the request out. They already provide that code right here for you. Chosen in the request one. They provide it right here for you. There, it, it's basically unmodified. I broke down the payload further out, not looking at the right one. So I should be looking at, contacts and adding a contact. So um, what you'll see here is you can have address, city, country, email, blah, blah, blah. I've stripped it down. I only care about email. So this is the format. Naturally, I would put the proper key and the proper ID. Now, what's really cool about SendGrid's page is you can actually try it out right here. You paste your API key, you paste what the body is, and then you can send the request. I did this so that I can get a list of my lists. Um, if you create a list on the page here, all you get is a name. It doesn't give you the ID. So what I did was get all lists. I just ran it right here with my API key and they give you a list with all of the names and IDs associated with it. So again, I'm, I'm hiding a bit because um, there are keys, there are IDs that, that, um, that I don't want you to see, but it's very obvious you would paste it here and here. Once that happens, I've modified this page. I've modified the, the landing page here. What I've done is just um, do an Ajax call. So another API call, I would go to the URL of my own API here. Uh, that would lead to the fast API. I, I'm not sharing that. I'll paste it in a second, send the email, and then on success, I'll alert that you've successfully subscribed. Um, if not, please enter an email. So what happens is you click the button, it runs a function of add contact. It's going to grab the value of the email slot, the input slot right here, and it's going to send it right over. Save that Let's come here. Oh, actually, 
uh, I need to make sure that I put in the right right page. So. <clears throat> So I'm just pasting the URL into, into the page. Now we have here. Um, let's put in some random email at .ca. Okay, notify me. And there we go, successfully subscribe. And you click OK. Um, if you want to, you can kind of blank it out or, or switch this to a thank you. You know, get rid of the input and the button and, and switch it to text that says thank you for subscribing or successfully subscribed instead of the alert. But let's keep it pretty janky for now. Um, and that's it. And then what happens is you can go to your SendGrid page. And it does take just a little bit of time to get all of the lists, but you can see Right here, we have our latest edition. And this is really good. One of the things you want to keep track of is, is when people added, how they added it, um, just to get a record of when they hit the landing page. If you do the really cheap, I'm just going to throw it into a text file, you don't have really good audit logs. If you do get in trouble with sending a lot of spam, if you lose a list, um, having it come through SendGrid is just more documentation, more um, more records of what you get, you've done. So you can delete these, delete the contact from the list, and let's delete it from the account. None of these are, obviously none of these are sensical email addresses, I delete them all. But um, you can create basically the same thing but you delete contacts for your unsubscribe button. But what is really beautiful is if you start sending, um, automatically sending emails through SendGrid, uh, they automatically have an unsubscribe button that will just go into SendGrid, delete them off the list. Um, and that is really helpful if you wanna make sure you're complying with laws, regulations, best practices. So um, just to go back, because I know we skipped a bit, what we've done here today is we created very simple bootstrap page with an input email address and a button. Once they enter an email address and, a, and click the button to subscribe, they're gonna run through my own API. And my own API is running fast API, and it's going to do this. It's going to validate the email with very simple regex, uh, regular expressions. It's not, it's not the best way to validate an email, but it, it's just something to get rid of the really terrible options, the really obviously false entries. Um, but, but we validate it and then we send it to SendGrid's API. So all I'm doing in, in oops, uh, well, you guys can see the, the link, but all I'm doing is we're sending it out to my API with an email address. Then it goes through SendGrid's and it's going to add it to the list that I created and it's gonna use my API key. They're, they're two very, very simple calls. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if uh, that was helpful. I, I do apologize that I left, um, I, I lost a bit of footage. So um, that's not ideal, but uh, you did skip through a lot of boring, just doing things off screen because I kept trying to hide the API key, trying to put it back, trying to hide it. Uh, you guys got definitely the Spark Notes version of what happened. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.